the people. question he has raised is very interesting. You know, people say, what is the proof of the life hereafter? The thing is that uh, this, we are talking of a life from where nobody has come back. There's no empirical so, proof. So, yes, so we don't have any eyewitness to say that, well, yes, I have been there, so on my authority you should believe like that. But there is a greater authority than that. If we believe, this is the question of the existence of God. If we believe that God Almighty is there, He is the creator, then that creator tells us that this is a part of my creation. After this temporary life, you are going to enter into a new life and that will be like this, like this. And the link between two is a very fundamental link because this life that we are in, through, in which we are living at this time, that has been made by God Almighty as a place for us to do something. This is called in Arabic Darul Amal. It's a house of action where we have to perform various things and these deeds are going to be recorded there. But if that is being recorded, we do certain things to the best of our ability. But after that, there, if there is no place for reward, then it, the whole thing becomes meaningless. Why Allah Almighty has created a life where we are struggling day and night, trying to be good, performing good deeds, and then there is no day of reward. So the life hereafter is described in Islamic term as Darul Jaza. That is the place where the reward will be given. So unless we believe in this uh, life of reward, the whole setup of this life becomes otherwise meaningless. Mm -hmm. There will be no need for anybody to be virtuous and kind and good and helpful and be nice. No need for that. Why? There is no reward. And nobody has to fear killing the people, cheating them, stealing the property and doing other uh, uh, types of vices. Why? There is no punishment after that. So in order to regulate the life, the concept of the life after death is an integral part of the whole divine scheme in which the whole universe has been created. Dr. Saab, this links fundamentally to the concept of justice within Islam and the fact that you know, inherently within man there is this concept of justice and, and uh, we as Muslims believe that that's actually something that's been inculcated within us by God Almighty. And the same way in which God uh, reproduces this concept of justice on a far larger scale when it, is, when it involves the judgments of one's good and bad actions in the hereafter. Yes, I mean, we of course believe that uh, all our actions in this world, as Imam Sabah has pointed out, are of course recorded and we will be held accountable for our deeds, for uh, there will be rewards or punishment according to what our actions have been. But we know that there is a just God and he will either reward us accordingly or punish us accordingly. Um, but also from the aspect of looking at creation as such. If we look at the creation of Allah, and Allah says, look at my creation, and we look at the creation of the universes, we know that uh, the, uh, there have been, that has been created over billions of years. But when we look at the creation of man, and he is, after all, man is the uh, uh, crea creation that is endowed with the most highest faculties. And then we say that he is only doing, going to be created for a very short period of time, 75, 80 years, 100 years. So that does not fit in with the overall uh, creation of Allah. So life here is of a temporary abode and it is a life where we do deeds according to which we will be judged and we will be judged according uh, on the day of judgment uh, and our account will, we will be held accountable for the deeds that we carry out here. Another aspect which I would like to present is that uh, this belief in the life hereafter is not uh, uh, only in Islam. This is universal belief. You go to any religion and in every um, place I think there are some religions. Mm -hmm. A majority, very big majority, a large majority of the people have some religion. And everywhere they believe this. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Secondly, those people who told us that uh, there is life hereafter, their truth can be tested by their prophecies. They made many prophecies which were fulfilled in this life. So if those prophecies which they made in this life, they were fulfilled, why their prophecy about the life after, hereafter will not be uh, fulfilled? Yes. It's an absolutely <laughs> fascinating subject and I'm sure we could go further, but we've got a number of questions to cover and I, and I'm, I hope we can cover as many as possible. If um, I just uh, can briefly add here one thing, that another justification or reason for the life after death is that there are many injustices done in this life. If people are not, uh, you know, given the, their full justice and those people, for example, who are uh, uh, born disabled 
or they become crippled in life and they spend the life of misery. If these people are not going to be rewarded and if some injustice has been done against them, then the redress is not uh, made there and given to them, then it will not uh, uh, really be uh, appear like a life which has been created by just God. Otherwise, it will be something very cruelty for those people. They suffer in this life and that is the end. So really the hereafter is a reflection of the, the beautiful justice that God Almighty has, has yes, created with yes, mankind. Yes, yes that's right. Um, linking to this uh, concept of um, the existence of God and, and worship, we've got a couple of questions here which Fahim Usman Saab, Jazakallah for your questions, which I understand from discussions with a non-Muslim friend have arisen. And the first of those questions is, um, when Islam is against idol worship, why do the Muslims worship and bow down to the Kaaba in their prayer? So the reference here is obviously the Kaaba in Mecca, and, and, and why is this concept there? Well, the thing is, uh, it should be understood very clearly that uh, when people go to Mecca to perform pilgrimage or Umrah, or when in their own places they are facing Mecca, they do not worship Mecca, and they do not worship that building at all. That is simply the direction in which they face. And that is a sacred building, and that is something which reminds them of God Almighty, His blessings, His bounties, and the whole history of full detail is there. So just to get reminded of that, it is ordained by God Almighty that this is a house, the very first house which has been made for the benefit of uh, the whole mankind, that is Khana Kaaba. And around that, so many man manifestations of divine uh, majesty has taken place. So in order to bring all these things to the mind, that house has been chosen as the focal point of the worship. Mm -hmm. But the worship is always done of Allah Almighty. He is the creator and there is no one else who is ever worthy of worship. That is a part of the basic declaration of Islam. It says, La ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. So Muslims never ever worship or never ever think of worshipping anybody, maybe a statue, maybe a tree, maybe sun or moon or even Hanakaba. They do not worship that. That is simply the direction to keep them on the right track and to bring about the unity hmm. of action among all the Muslims who are scattered all over the globe. One benefit uh, of uh, Hanakaba is that uh, people from all over the world get together there. They know each other's uh, you know, conditions, who is in need. How, what kind of help can be provided to the people? So there are two aspects of uh, you know the te teaching about Hanukkah. One is that we should worship Allah, but at the same time we should uh, meet all the people of the world and we should create a universal brotherhood. So that is an additional benefit uh, for which. So, we it's, so it's linked quite fundamentally to the concept of unity in Islam and the fact that yeah. you know, billions yeah. of Muslims around the world. Yeah. Uh, on a daily basis, five times a day, prostrate yes. mm -hmm. in the same direction. Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, but obviously, to be absolutely clear, there is no worship of a physical being mm. or a physical object it's here. Not it's purely all. a worship of God, and it's a it's a it's a it's a mechanism and a means by which you see the unity of 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 of, of all the Muslims around the world. And in the Holy Quran, very clearly, it is said that Hazrat Ibrahim al Islam and it's this Ismail al-Islam who rebuilt the Khana Kaaba. Yeah. They didn't build it for worshipping Kaaba. They built it so that people come there and they worship God, God Almighty. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it is understood that uh, perhaps originally it was built by Hazrat Adam al-Islam. In history there is possibly accounts of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Hazrat Ibrahim was the father of prophets and the patriarch. Uh, so it, it is, uh, should be recognized that the Jews and the Christians that uh, the house that was rebuilt by Hazrat Ibrahim and his son Hazrat Ismail salam, is also a center focus for uh, all the great religions of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, we know that in the early days of Islam, the Holy Prophet <laughs> uh, used to face towards Jerusalem. Um, and it was only after Hijra, about 16 months after Hijra, that the um, Holy Prophet <laughs> was directed to face towards the Kaaba in Mecca for, for that reason. And when the Kaaba, uh, and the victory of Islam, when, when the Kaaba was cleared of the idols by the Holy Prophet Wasallam, there were also some pictures that used to hang on the walls of the Kaaba. And Hazrat, uh, Holy Prophet Wasallam gave Hazrat Umar uh, the task of clearing the pictures from there. 
uh, the prophet came back and found that the pictures had been cleared but one picture had been left on the wall and that was of Hazrat Ibrahim uh, salam, and uh, he inquired why this picture had not been taken down because Hazrat Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian but was one who turned to Allah so he directed this, this picture should be taken down uh, that it was only the worship of Allah that we bow down to so that is the focal point mm -hmm. of our worship